So this video is about rational functions. Um, so there was a video already, or a few videos, on simplifying rational expressions, so you've seen those. Um, also to do with non-permissible values, which will come up again when we're graphing in terms of asymptotes. Um, so graphing rational functions is really important. It's important to have a few, a couple of functions, basic ones memorized, so you know the basic shape. Um, if you're taking Math 1500, graphing rational functions comes up over and over again, and you'll use properties of calculus to graph them. Um, so it's a little bit trickier without with the properties of calculus. It does actually make it a lot easier. But so here we'll just look at some basic properties and using the, the parent functions to get the idea of the basic shapes. So the first parent function I want to look at is just 1 over x. Okay, so here we want to maybe figure out what our asymptotes are first before we start graphing. So our asymptotes are those non-permissible values that we talked about before. So I know that I can never divide by a zero, therefore when x equals zero, I will have a problem. So x equals zero is going to be an asymptote, so that's just the y-axis. Okay, I also have an issue where f of x could never be equal to zero, because if I think about it, if I have a fraction, the only way that it could be equal to zero is if I have a zero in the numerator, um, because I have a constant one in the numerator, that will never be zero. So therefore, I also have an asymptote at y equals zero, so along the x-axis. Okay, so now if I were to plot my uh, function here, what happens when, so if I just think about making it to little table of values in my head to get this quick plot, and then you should just memorize the basic shape of this. So when x equals one, f of x, f of one is also one, when x equals 2, f of 2 is a half, and when x equals a half, f of a half is going to be 2. So I'm going to get something that looks kind of like this. Okay, and now if I choose a negative value of x, so negative, if x is negative 1, f of negative 1 is also going to be negative 1. And then I'm actually just going to mirror the image down here. Okay, so that's the graph of 1 over x. Um, the ends of each part of those, the pink section of the graph, is approaching those asymptotes, but it'll never ever touch. So I can get as close to x equals 0 and y equals 0 as I can, but it will never actually touch them. So the domain of this graph then is, I can get as close to x equals 0 as I want, but I can't actually touch it. So I'm going from negative infinity to zero, but then I have to stop and not include it, and then I can start again at zero and go up to infinity. Okay, and the range is going to be the same thing. I can't include y equals zero, so my domain is going to be, or my range, sorry, is going to be from negative infinity to zero, and then I can start again at zero, go up to infinity. Um, my intercepts, I don't have any. I'm never crossing the x and y axes because I actually have asymptotes there. Okay, let's see another kind of parent function that you should have in your mind when you're graphing. So when f of x is equal to 1 over x squared, so just another kind of common rational function, what does it look like? So again, I'll have asymptotes. I can't have x equals 0 because that would give me a denominator of 0, which I don't want. And I know that I have a fraction. It can never be equal to 0 because the numerator is not 0, it's 1. So I'm going to have the same asymptotes that I had in the previous example. Okay, and then if I pick some points um, to plug in for x, so if I put x is 1, I'll get f of 1 is also 1. I'm actually going to have the same shape in here. If you want to verify that with a few more values, you can. And then when x is negative 1, when I square it, it's going to become positive, so I'm actually bumping up here into the second quadrant. Okay, so 1 over x squared looks like this, and it actually... Um, Sorry, the name for it, one of my teachers called it was a volcano, so if that helps you remember what it looks like, it looks like a volcano. So the domain of this graph um, is I can go from x is negative infinity all the way up again to zero, but not include zero, because I have an asymptote there. And then I can start again at zero, but not include it, and then go all the way up to positive infinity. So my graph or my function will approach zero, x equals zero, get really, really, really close to it, but never actually reach it. Okay, and then my range for this graph is a little bit different than the previous one. So I don't have any negative values for y, because I'm not dropping below the x-axis. 
So my the lowest I can go is just really, really close to zero, but not including it. So I'll put a round bracket around zero, and then going up to positive infinity. Okay, and then my intercepts, again, I have none. I'm not crossing the x or y axes anywhere um, because I have those asymptotes there. Okay, so let's see a couple of examples. So the first example I have here is just a basic transformation on the parent graph 1 over x. So if we remember, let's not call it g because that's my function that I'm dealing with. So let's call it h of x is 1 over x, so my parent function. I remember what that looks like in my head. Now what this plus 2 is doing to the parent function is it's actually translating it, the parent function, two units to the left. So if you think about it, to identify your asymptotes, well, you know you're going to have an asymptote at x equals negative 2. Oops, that should be a negative 2, because that would make the denominator equal to 0. And you also know you're going to have another asymptote at y equals 0, because there's a constant on the top. If you divide the constant, it, any way you do that, you can't get a 0, or that fraction equal to 0. So I have x equals negative 2 as an asymptote, so that's here. And then I have y equals 0 as an asymptote, which is the x-axis. Okay, so I've just translated it two units to the left, so it's going to do the same thing to every other point. So my original parent function, I remember I had a point here, and then I had that basic shape like this, right? So I'm just translating that point two units to the left. So it was starting there, so I'm going to go one, two, and it's going to end up here. And then I'm going to get that same basic shape again. And then again, translating, I had on my original parent function, I had a point here. It's going to go two units to the left, so one, two. So it's going to end up here and there. And if you want to verify it with a table of values, you can. Um, so yeah, that's that. I do see that I have an intercept on this one, actually. So I'm crossing the y-axis right here at this point. So I do have a, a y-intercept. So um, this table of values that I was seeing on either side of the asymptote, so you could have set this up to see what was happening. So when x was um, negative 1, I'd get that f of x is 1. And when x is negative 3, I'd get that f of x is negative 1. Okay, and then I have that basic shape that I know from before from my parent functions. So now what is my y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept will happen when x equals 0. So I want to find g of 0, which is going to be 1 over 0 plus 2, which is a half. So I know my intercept here is the point 0, a half. Okay, let's see one more quick example. So just to mention um, the domain and range of this function as well. So the domain of this function, I can go all the way up to negative, x is negative 2, but then I have to take a break there because there is an asymptote. So I can go from negative infinity to negative 2, but I have to take a break, and then I can start again from negative 2 to infinity. And my range as well, I can go from negative infinity up to 0. And then I have to take a break, so union with 0 and infinity. Okay. Okay, so I have this 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 1. So again, my first step is to identify my asymptotes. So I know that I'll have problems when x equals negative 1 and positive 1, because that would make my denominator equal to 0. And I also know, again, because I have a constant on the top, that y can't be equal to 0. So I'll draw in those asymptotes. Okay, so that's x equals 1. You should label as well, just so it's nice and neat. Okay, and then let's see kind of what's happening on either side of the asymptotes. So let's pick a value for x that's to the left of that asymptote x equals negative 1. So let's pick negative 2. So when I plug in negative 2 into my function, I'll get 1 over negative 1 times negative 3, which will be 1 third. So when x is negative 2, y will be 1 third, so somewhere like this. 
Okay, and then from there right away, I know I have that basic shape that'll look something like this. So just kind of getting some curve sketching. It doesn't have to be exact, but just to get the idea of the shape and to show that those ends are approaching the asymptote as well. Okay, and then let's go to the right of the asymptote x equals 1. So let's pick 2. So when x equals positive 2, I'll have 1 over 3 times 1, which is again 1 third, which is good because it could, should be symmetric. My asymptotes are symmetric as well. So where did I put that? 2 and a third right there. Okay. Okay, but then I do have something happening in the center there in between those two asymptotes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick um, x equals 0. So that wasn't an asymptote, so that's okay. I can pick that value for x and figure out what h of x is. So when x is 0, I'll get 1 over 1 times negative 1, so I get negative 1. So when x is 0, y is negative 1. Okay, and then because I know the parent graph is symmetric, um, this point must be my maximum, and I have a parabola in the middle there that's opening downwards. So just based on those basic properties that I have memorized, I know how to graph this. When you're working with calculus, you'll have some um, more explicit methods for finding maximums and minimums, um, which work a lot nicer. But without the methods of calculus, it's a little bit trickier, so we'll just stick to these basic functions for now. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. And then just to mention the domain range and intercepts for this graph. So the domain, I have to take breaks at negative 1 and positive 1. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, can include negative 1, and then union with negative 1 to 1, can include those values, and then union again with 1 to infinity. So I have three pieces there to my domain. And then my range is going to be from negative infinity up to the only y value I have a problem with is 0. And then union with 0 and negative infinity. And then my intercepts, so I only have one intercept, I have a y-intercept here at 0, negative 1.